I'm not talking about meters. I'm talking about yards. Designing model railroad yards for realistic operations on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I recently got an email from Terry, who was asking me about North Yard on my layout. Well, that email got me to thinking about yard design and operations, and some things that are essential to good operations in a model railroad yard. So today I want to talk to you about some of those essential elements that you need in any model railroad yard to make it operate realistically, regardless of the era. I'm also going to show you some operational extras that you may or may not want to add to your yard that can add some great operational flexibility and a lot of fun to yard operations if you decide to include them and if you have the space. Do you enjoy yard operations on your layout or on layouts that you operate on? Tell me about it in the comments section below. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll share with you a couple of resources about model railroad yard design that will be an absolute essential help to you as you think about the yard on your next model railroad layout. And now we're going to take a look at North Yard on my layout. It's not a perfect yard design by any means, but I'm going to show you some of those essential elements that I've included in North Yard. I'm going to show you the things that work really well, and I'm also going to show you some things that I need to change in order to make the yard look a little better. So let's go take a look. As I talk about some of these crucial elements to good yard design, I'm going to use my own North Yard as an example, and I'm going to show you some photographs of North Yard here. Uh, first, here is a photograph from the south looking north through all of North Yard. But so we can get a better view, I'm going to show you some zoomed in uh, photos. Here is a zoomed in photo looking specifically at the yard ladder and some of the real business parts of the yard, again looking north. And I also have uh, a photo that I'll show you of the same area looking south as we look at some of those elements a little bit later. I'm going to share these elements with you, not in any particular order. Uh, they're all very important, and so I'm just going to tell you uh, kind of what they are and show you where they are and how they work on, on my layout. The first crucial element to a good yard design, and probably the most important thing, is to have an isolated yard lead or drill track. This is the track that you use to pull your cut of cars out onto in order to be able to push it, shove it into the yard ladder to classify your cars. It's important that you have the yard lead isolated from the main line so that you can do your yard switching without interfering with main line operations and uh, so you can work more efficiently. Now, your yard lead or your drill track needs to be at least as long as your longest classification track. And your classification tracks need to be as long as your longest train. And this way you can do efficient classifying of cars. You can literally make up an entire train on one classification track. And by having the drill track or the yard lead as long as your longest train, whenever you have a train that comes into your arrival track, you can pull the entire thing onto the yard lead and then classify it all in one set of moves. So that isolated yard lead is very, very important. If for some reason your yard lead is set up to where it interferes with the main line, or if you're trying to use the main as a yard lead, it's going to cause a bottleneck for operations on your main line, and it's also going to slow down the operations in the yard themselves. The second crucial element is an arrival and departure track. The arrival departure track is just as it sounds. It's the place where cuts or blocks of cars are placed in the yard through trains that are coming through. Or if a train is, is terminating at the yard, the entire train is placed on the arrival departure track. And there it can wait for the yard switcher until it is ready to pull it into the yard lead and start uh, classifying the cars from that train. In my case, I actually have two arrival and departure tracks, which allows me to have one train arriving and also one staged for departing at the same time. 
Now, an important part of the arrival departure track design is to make sure that you can access the arrival and departure track from the main line without fouling the yard lead. You want to be able to bring trains into the yard to the arrival track or pull a train out of the yard to depart on the main without causing the yard switcher to have to stop doing his work because your arrival departure track somehow interferes with or fouls the yard lead. In my case, you can see right here uh, that my arrival departure tracks can access the main line without causing any kind of interference to the yard ladder or the yard lead. It's also a really good idea, if possible, to be able to access your arrival departure track from the main at both ends. In my case, most of my classification tracks in North Yard are stub-ended. That's for the sake of space. A double-ended yard is ideal. It has the most flexibility, but uh, it also costs a lot more space and room. Uh, so most of my classification tracks are stub-ended, but my arrival departure tracks are double-ended. You can access them from either end onto the main and not cause any interference with the yard switcher. A third important element for a yard is a thoroughfare or what's sometimes called a running track. Now this is especially important if you have a double-ended yard that can be accessed from both ends, but even in my case where most of my tracks are stub-ended, uh, still very, very helpful to have a thoroughfare track. A thoroughfare track allows you to be able to access both ends of the yard, again, without interfering with the yard lead or with the switching operations within the yard. It allows locomotives to be able to escape from trains within classification tracks and get to the servicing track for locomotives. It also allows for local switching of industries along the yard without fouling the yard lead. And it allows cars that need repair to be placed on the uh, rip or repair in place track without causing interference to the yard switcher. Uh, so a thoroughfare or running track is very, very helpful uh, and, in my opinion, a crucial element to a good yard design, especially if you're modeling a, a, an intermediate or larger size yard. A fourth very crucial element uh, that you absolutely have to have in, in any yard, and that is you need to have some way to run around trains. You're going to have to be able to access trains from both ends, in part to be able to get trains in and out of the yard, uh, but also for the sake of classification, that can be very, very helpful. In my case, I have uh, a couple of different places where I can run around trains. Uh, first, I can do it in my arrival departure tracks as they both connect at both ends. But also in my yard, classification uh, track six and the thoroughfare track are uh, both connected at the far end, the north end of the yard. And so I can use that as a run around track as well. Now I'll take this moment to tell you one thing that I need to change and improve on my North Yard, and that is I need a second crossover between classification track 6 and my thoroughfare track at the south end of the thoroughfare right here. Uh, having that crossover will allow me to be able to pull cuts of cars that need to be switched into industries along the yard that have to go into tail end tracks and allow me to pull cars down along the thoroughfare track and then shove them back into those industries. Uh, it'll just make a lot more flexibility and it'll make uh, the thoroughfare track and classification track six uh, a whole lot easier to use and that's a, a change that I'm going to be making in the not too distant future. And then of course, not least importantly, uh, we all have to have a yard with classification tracks. We have to have uh, some tracks to be able to switch our trains in, to be able to re-block and redistribute cars into new blocks for industries or new trains for, uh, for outbound trains. And a yard can be as simple and as small as, as a couple of classification tracks. In my case, I have six classification tracks in, in my yard. Uh, the most important thing here, that, and as I said before, and I'll repeat, is that your classification tracks are as long as the, the trains that you'll be making up and breaking down within those tracks, so that you have plenty of room to be able to do all of the work that you need to do. Now, those are some 
of what I consider to be crucial elements, the things you cannot do without in a good yard design. And I want to tell you about some other, maybe slightly more optional elements, uh, but elements that are often part of yards depending on the size of the yard and also depending on the era. And uh, they can be things that make your yard work and yard operations much more interesting. Uh, the first that I'm going to mention is locomotive service tracks. Now, if you are modeling in the steam era, this is not an optional element. Uh, steam engines were uh, highly maintenance-intensive machines, and so even the smallest yards would have a water tower and some place for basic service for a steam locomotive. And moderate-sized yards would also have uh, a, a way of coaling or fueling a locomotive. They would have an ash pit. They would have a turntable, and if not a full roundhouse, then at least a an engine shed where uh, maintenance and, and work could be done. Larger yards would have larger roundhouses and back shops where uh, more intensive service and, and maintenance could be done. Locomotive service tracks in the steam era were uh, a, an essential element to a yard. In the modern era, uh, not every yard is going to have locomotive service uh, tracks. Uh, smaller yards often may not have any at all, simply because you can run a diesel locomotive uh, a much greater distance in a much longer time without having to do a lot of maintenance on it, or even without having to fuel it as, as often as you would a, a steam locomotive. Often, even in the modern era, uh, a moderate-sized yard will have at least some uh, locomotive servicing facility. In my case here at North Yard, uh, I have one track that serves as my loco service track, and it has a place for refueling locomotives, has a sanding tower, also has an inspection pit, a place where some basic locomotive uh, maintenance and repair can, can take place. A second option for... Um, yards that, that can make a lot of interest in uh, your yard is a rip track or a repair in place track. In my version of North Yard, I have two rip tracks side by side and, and they are partially covered uh, with this shed roof and there is a mechanical building there. Uh, and this makes uh, for an, an interesting part of operations because it allows you to build into your main line operations uh, some means of deciding, is there a car that needs service or repair within the train? And if there is, it can be pulled at the yard and can be placed in the rip track for one cycle of your way bills or a, first, a certain amount of time until it's had time to be repaired and then returned to the train and sent on to its destination. I also want to mention that locomotive service tracks and rip tracks also kind of make an extra industry on your layout because locomotive service, uh, those tracks are going to require uh, deliveries of uh, diesel fuel in the modern era or uh, in the, the steam era, uh, deliveries of coal, uh, sand uh, would have to be uh, brought in for the uh, for the sand tower, ash pits have to be emptied and that ash uh, it has to be hauled away. Uh, for the rip track, uh, in my case, I have gondolas filled with wheel sets that are, that are brought in for repairs on the rip track and other kinds of parts. So there's all kinds of, of industrial uh, deliveries that can be made to these tracks, just like they were another industry on your layout. A third option for a yard is to have industry tracks along the yard. Uh, you can notice here in my north yard, I actually have six industries that are right along the back side, uh, the, the uh, west side of north yard, and they are switched right out of the thoroughfare track of the yard. Uh, often yards would have industries built right there on the yard. It was the most convenient place to have an industry. It was easiest to get the railroad service that uh, an industry might need to deliver or to ship out the products that they manufacture. And so there often would be industries right there along the tracks. A scale track can be a, a, an important part of yard tracks, especially in the past, but even today, often there are tracks where certain commodities have to be weighed within the car. And so a yard would have a scale track and a scale house to, to be able to weigh those cars. I do not have a scale track in North Yard. A clean-out track can also be an interesting uh, thing to include in a yard. Now, North Yard in the prototype has a clean-out track. Uh, my model of North Yard does not have. 
But those cleanup tracks can be uh, helpful as you have cars that sometimes uh, deliver goods and then need to be cleaned thoroughly before they can be sent on to another industry to be used again. And so you can see cars, everything from box cars to gondolas to uh, all kinds of, of different kinds of freight cars on cleanout tracks uh, to be cleaned up and prepared for their uh, their next duty. And then, of course, again, if you are modeling in the 1970s or earlier, you absolutely would want to include a caboose track. Now, I, I'm calling it optional here because if you're modeling in the modern era like I am, the caboose tracks are, are gone because nobody uses cabooses anymore. But uh, if you are modeling pre-1980, uh, you're going to have to have a caboose track because those uh, cabooses were parts of those trains. And in most of the caboose era, a caboose was actually connected with a particular crew. A particular conductor would have his caboose. And so whenever he came to a particular yard and was laying over there, his caboose would be parked on a caboose track. And it wasn't until he was getting on to the next train that that caboose would then be coupled and used. So there had to be places to store and and uh, park those cabooses uh, in between the trains in which they were used. So a caboose track would be, uh, I'm calling it optional because it depends on your era, but again, if you were pre-1980, you definitely need to include a caboose track on a yard of, of any size at all. And so those are some some important and honestly some essential elements to good uh, model railroad yard design and operation and also some options that uh, in a moderate size yard can make your yard operations a lot more interesting. It's more interesting to look at. It's more fun to operate and can honestly give you many hours of enjoyment in, in operating a yard because you include uh, these different elements within the design of your yard. For me personally, one of the most enjoyable parts of model railroading is operations. And one of my favorite elements of operations is operating a yard. But any yard is much more fun to operate and to classify in if it's well designed. Some of the elements that I mentioned today and some others can make or break your yard operations. It can make your yard a breeze to run that people really enjoy operating, or it can make it a total frustration that nobody wants to come back to. Now, I told you in the intro that I would share with you a couple of resources at the end of this video about yard design operation. One of those two resources is going to be a little difficult to get, and the other one that you already have at your fingertips. The first of those resources is this book by Andy Sperandio, published by Comback Books in 2004. It is the Model Railroader's Guide to Freight Yards. This is an absolutely wonderful book that has all the essentials about what you need in a good model railroad freight yard and some of those extras that can make your freight yards much more enjoyable to run. It gives you examples of track plans of freight yards and how they incorporate into layouts. It is a great book. Now, unfortunately, this book is out of print, but if you search online on eBay, sometimes you can find copies of it. And also, if you look around at swap meets, I bet you'll run across one. And I would advise if you find a copy of Andy Sperandio's book on freight yards, pick it up. It'll be an absolutely wonderful resource to have in your library and at your fingertips. The second resource I want to tell you about is already at your fingertips at the computer that you may be sitting at right now. That is a resource from the National Model Railroad Association's Layout Design Special Interest Group, or LDSIG. They have published online a model railroad design primer. And in that primer, they have an entire section devoted to yard design. They have some great tips in there, and they outline all the essentials, and they'll tell you exactly the things that you need to know before you begin trying to design your yard for your next layout. I'm going to provide a link to that primer, and specifically to that section on yard design, in the description down below, so I hope that you'll go check that out. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. I also hope you'll check out the description down below and see the links to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Patreon page and ways that you can connect with me on social media. Be sure and join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great model railroading segment and I look forward to seeing you then.
again, Lizzie. 